Friday, July the 20th, 2012. Day I'll probably never forget. The overwhelming feeling of shock and disbelief. It would have been a huge impact for me. Mortgage kids, the, I think a lot of us are in that same boat. Uh, you never think it's going to happen to you. Yeah, one of my guys came running out of the factory saying, fire, fire. I asked fire. him where was the fire, and he said the whole factory's on fire. A multi-million dollar factory has been destroyed by fire in Sydney, sparked by an electrical fault. Now hundreds of people are out of a job indefinitely. We all had the weekend to kind of like stress out about what, what's going to happen with all of us. I would have lost my house, but I lost my job. Monday, we all had a meeting down there at 9 o'clock. And a few of the senior management spoke to us. And it was not about what can't we do, it's what can we do and what are we going to do. They're going to pay our wages for a year and their plan was to rebuild. And you just heard over the whole tent, everyone was like, yes. We had to work out what, what do we do with so many employees. Uh, and one of the things that we came up with was for them to be working in community projects. So some people were working for the local library, um, you know, St Denny's, just to keep everybody occupied and active. They could have easily just shut the doors and let everybody go and find another job somewhere. But instead they fought for local manufacturing with a dedicated team of people. While many companies have been choosing to move offshore, we chose to rebuild manufacturing here in Australia. It was a big decision for us, but we believe it's the right decision for our customers, for our employees, and the right decision for the business. All of a sudden, we went from a manufacturing business to an importing business. Eastern Creek was a warehouse operation. And it went from four people to about 34 overnight. Everyone was in different jobs. We had to learn new things. And there were some hidden gems there. There were some people that had a lot of talent that we maybe just hadn't recognised. It allowed them to see that I was capable of more, and it allowed me to show them that I was capable of more. Everybody was focused on getting back on deck and minimising the impact on our customers. The fire was an awful thing, but I think if you're tough and you get on with it, good things will come from it. You know, they've been through probably the darkest days of Interface, and now we're coming to the other side of it. It's really a manufacturer's dream to be able to start from scratch and redesign an operation. We practice what we call lean manufacturing. So it's all about smoothing out your process and ensuring that it's really efficient. The work kind of follows in one direction. We start at one end of the factory and follow it all the way around. We're going to eliminate as much waste as we can. Waste in time, waste in materials, waste in resources. A local manufacturing capability for us means the ability to better serve the needs of our design intensive customers across a whole range of industry sectors across commercial office, health and aged care, education and hospitality. We've got a number of new machines in this facility, two new tapestry machines that do intricate patterns. The new machines are obviously going to allow to make products that weren't available before the fire. Yes, and really sort of create something um, that's very bespoke. I mean, there's a real sophistication of design. And they have such a refined eye and such an understanding of, you know, colour palette, colour theory. We can deliver a faster service, more flexible lead times and a broader range of colours and patterns. We can accommodate orders as small as five metres squared up to thousands of square metres. We've only got one quarter into the operating of the new factory and already we're back down to our lead times. The machines are so much quicker, they're so much more efficient with state-of-the-art packaging and robotic equipment. We can get something that's off the back in line to the client in a matter of hours. Now, out of any time, is that we really need to look after the customers we have. Obviously, after the fire, there were some hiccups, but they managed that extremely well, and we've stuck with Interface because of the people, because of the service, and because of the product. Obviously we're aware that Interface, they have their Mission Zero goal. We always try to specify as you know, sustainably and as thoughtfully as possible and we really always look to work with companies who do the same. We believe strongly in social sustainability. It's our commitment to keeping jobs in Australia and to the exceptional people here at Interface. If you can't operate a profitable business in a sustainable way, I think you have a limited future. We're not just here just for the job. We all care about the company, we care about each other. And I'm very proud of what we do. This is hard sometimes, getting this all through, but we all work together as a team to actually get the stuff out the door. First thing I do when I walk into, say, a bank is look down and go, that's our product. It's good to recognise something that you've put in boxes over the years is actually out on the floors in places. I get a buzz out of it. <laughs> I'm like, wow, we made that carpet. <laughs>